Hello and welcome to Audiobook Reviews. Now before I get going, I have to just say, wow. I reviewed recently the first book in the First Law trilogy, The Blade Itself, and now have just finished Before They Are Hanged. I commented in my review for The Blade Itself that it, it seemed like there was really a lot of buildup and that it was really just setting up a lot to happen in book two. I commented book one felt like there wasn't a ton going on. There were plot lines and there was some resolution, but it just it seemed like it was a very small scale. And boy, did that change uh, with book two. Now, before I get into spoilers, I will, I'll start out with a more general type of just overview. So with the last book, you had the pieces kind of coming together. There was a big quest that was going to be starting. There is a war. There was more mysterious, shadowy things kind of behind the scenes. In book two, we get really three individual plot lines. A lot of characters are now maybe together versus being separate. But we get the three major plot lines and three major resolutions, though not all in the way that you might expect, which is where it really gets interesting uh, as well. It's kind of hard to do a non-spoiler uh, review of a second book because I also don't know how much I should do uh, the first book. But you know what? I I'll assume if you're watching a review for book two of a series, you've probably read book one. So on that note... We have our, our three major plot points. So we have the, the quest to go find the seed going to the edge of the world that's now begun. So that's where we have Baez the sorcerer, his apprentice, Malchus Kwai. We've got Jezel, the full of himself uh, fencer. We have Logan Nine Fingers, the most dangerous man in the world. Essentially, we have Pharaoh, our escaped slave from the south, also extremely deadly. And we have our navigator, who I think honestly serves more comic relief than anything, just with being a little bit annoying. But So we have that group headed off across the world in general. Uh, that's kind of where we ended. And their quest, we get a, a severe big push with kind of where they're going. And once again, not ending quite the way that it saw. We knew that West was going to be going to war in England, up in the north, and we also knew that our pack clan of Northmen uh, were also potentially going to try to meet up with the Union and help out with the war against Bethon. So we get to see that come to fruition and uh, some very interesting pieces there as well. And then the, the piece we knew a lot less about, but was kind of just also starting at the end of book one, is Glockta who became one of my favorite characters, uh, was being sent off to a dangerous land, Agoska, uh, where there very well was going to be a chance of crazy war and lots of fun issues. So that's kind of where we left off. We, we get really, book two felt like an extremely complete book, but also still left a lot of room for what's going to happen in book three. I'm going to jump now into the spoiler section. I have quite a lot to say there. So um, I tried to keep it pretty, at least there, uh, to get go. I will put in the description the spot you can skip ahead to get kind of back into the summary and general other pieces there. As well, though, of course, if you can't figure out that I really enjoyed this book, I, I, I don't know how much clearer I can make it. So anyway, I, I have to say... This book really did. There was a lot more going on. There was a lot of nonstop action. We had our party traveling to find the seed. I'm, I'm going to call it the stone because that's just more fun to say, I think. Um, going off to find the stone. It's this mysterious weapon. It's kind of the classic quest. You know, they're, they're following a wizard. It's this ragtag group of people from all over the world. But it's done in such a unique way. You learn a lot more about these characters, and they kind of all go through growth in a way as well. And the duality some of these characters have, I, I mentioned in the spoiler section of the first book, you see that most strongly with Nine Fingers, because you're meeting this guy, and he's supposed to be so deadly, but it just it seems like, oh, I mean, he seems like kind of a nice guy. And then you see literally his other half, the Bloody Nine, where he barely even understands what's going on. It's it's a, like a complete shift in who he is. 
but you see a lot going on with the characters as well. So the group who are traveling, uh, it's very rough going. They're going through the ancient lands of the old empire. They face enemy soldiers. They later face the Shank of the Flatheads, who we learn a bit more about as well, that they're these creatures that were created and uh, essentially they the wizards tried to a long time ago kill them off and they're still more of them as well and you get the feeling they're going to play a bigger part uh pretty early on as well <clears throat> but the character growth is really interesting to see you get to see uh, one really fun thing is logan and his idea that small gestures and time will help so that he can get everybody to be friendly and you know earn the trust of his companions and once again seems like the last thing for his character that you'd see but you get a lot of comments from dogman and the others in his northern band who all still think he's dead uh and it's just it's an interesting piece essentially him doing that you then have pharaoh who essentially doesn't trust anyone it's just kind of violence is all that's left in her life you learn more about her backstory that she has been a a slave basically a sex slave since a young age and uh escaped and just wants nothing more than to kill her enemies and, and that's really it and you get uh which it seemed like it was likely to happen a little bit of a relationship with her and logan which did end up with an incredibly awkward sex scene which you know it's it's one of those things not not a biggest fan of the big sex scenes in books to be honest it was a very awkward one too intentionally i'll note it was supposed to be very awkward um <laughs> it i guess served its purpose that's something i could have done without but you see them start with a relationship as well uh, you see Baez, really, you get more into see his rage and his anger. He ends up incapacitating himself from exerting so much will and his magic to destroy this group of soldiers who's attacking them. And that opens up uh, what I think he needed, a, a chance for the mortals to fight. You do find out that Pharaoh is actually descended from intermingled races of the demons and humans, uh, which is why she's along and she's special. Uh, Logan, since he can talk to spirits, is something that's going to be needed on the quest, you find out. Uh, Jezel, you, you still don't really get a, a specific reason, but it's it seemed pretty clear to me for a while there that he's being set up to uh, essentially take over as the king of the union uh, is where it seems like it's going could be wrong um there's not really the end of book two doesn't tell you if that's going to happen but that seems like plot going to be happening in book three anyway at that point but i jezel on that note too you actually see grow up a little bit he starts he's still completely full of himself he's just whiny and mopey about being there it's just terrible he, he's not really taking it seriously he's disgusted by other people around him and he's forced to actually fight uh and that's not really something he's done he's done did the fencing and he's very good at it but actually fighting and killing and he starts out actually being a little bit successful he breaks through he does it and then he is seriously injured and has to learn to completely rely on these companions that he basically has been looking at as animals and realizes that oh you know i actually do need other people oh these people actually are really trying and he he kind of grows a little bit and the end does Take it away just a little bit with a couple of pieces, but the dichotomy between Jezel and Prince Ladislaw, who is with West in the in the north, uh, was something that I thought was really interesting. So to hop over to that piece, you have West, and he's off in the north. You'd gotten some peaks at his terrible temper in the last book, but you really see it start to be unleashed and see him also learn to control it to some extent as well so he's up in the north he is told that he's supposed to stay with prince ladislaw who's just a buffoon really full of himself has never had to work anything kind of a similar character to jezel in a way but actually nearly worse really and well definitely worse a little later in the story but he's a buffoon and he is supposed to be in the area where he's even though he's in charge he won't have to fight well, of course, things don't turn out that way. The northern army ends up coming near them, and so he sends off the fight. 
there's this crushing defeat in him and West and a couple of other characters are the only ones to actually survive. They end up joining in with the band of Northmen who had immediately realized that the prince was an idiot and said, we're staying out of this battle. They're all going to get killed. Uh, but they, they take them and they're trying to join up with the rest of the army. And so you see him too. He's going through hardship. They're doing hard traveling and he's nothing but complaining and doesn't really get to that point, even though he did almost die. Uh, that little bit of growth and understanding that I, I need to be better. Maybe I'm the problem. And in fact, you actually see him, whereas Jezel's learning and growing, you see Ladislaw, who tries to rape a woman who's traveling with them, and West ends up actually killing him. Granted, that's his, not only his commanding officer, the prince of the, the Union, the crown prince, the one who's supposed to inherit when the king dies. Uh, note from the first book, the king is expected to die at any point, really. <laughs> um to add that in as well to the intrigue. But so seeing him, for one, you see West and he just, it's a kind of a cold rage at that point. But that character literally, by for, refusing to actually grow and become a better person, dies. Uh, whereas Jezel seems to be growing. So that whole piece, hearing from the Northmen, they, they are some of the most interesting, depending on who you're following. Normally, the Dogman, but the, the narrative structure, the way it's written is really different with that group, and it, it makes it just interesting always reading their points of view. Uh, lastly, the third other main arc is Glockton. Now, he's sent to Tagoska. He's supposed to root out to see who killed the person he's replacing as superior uh, he's given papers saying he's in charge of everything, and he's basically sent there and told, figure out who murdered the person you're replacing, figure out who's a part of this conspiracy to give the city away without a fight to the other empire in the south, uh, and then hold the city at all costs. He's later told there's no money coming, there's no reinforcements coming, you just, you're on your own, figure it out. Uh, he does end up getting a huge sum of money from uh, the bank that was mentioned in the first book, which my thought there seems to be highly involved with the closed ruling council and specifically uh, the leader of the Inquisition, Salt, I think is going to be a lot heavily more involved and that's probably going to come up a lot more in book three. Um as well, but they they give him a large amount of money that he ends up using, and he holds out as long as he can, roots the corruption, but the, the whole path of that plot line was just really interesting, and you get to see, I, I felt like Lockta, one thing that annoyed me, he looked a little dumb in the first book, because he's supposed to be very crafty, and you see he kind of was just in a spot where he almost didn't really care, he was still trying, he was still doing his job and everything, but the piece over and over was why do I do this in the first book where in the second book he's really truthfully fighting for his life and you get to kind of see the old Glockta what he would have been like you know before he was injured and before he was just in this pit of despair and you really see him planning strategizing rooting these the corruption out figuring out the plot and is very satisfying uh the way that the series ends though or not the series the book ends though i have to say huge huge props to joe abercrombie for ending a book in the way he did because it was really something else we get uh, the first the, the main plot the the quest to go find the seed this stone the edge of the world uh that's supposed to be a huge weapon uh, this is to even bigger spoilers than everything I've talked about for the very end of the book, but definitely something I want to talk about here. Uh, they get there. They go through everything. They all nearly die multiple times. They have to go find this. They go to this remote area. There's another wizard, one of the order that Bayaz is in. There's this boat that... She has to keep there, essentially, in case somebody needs to travel to the end of the world. They get it. They travel. You get nine fingers talking to the wizard. You get Pharaoh ready to take the stone because she's the only one who can hold it based on her demon blood. And it's just a regular rock. It's not the thing they've been looking for this whole time. It's not there. It was all a trick, basically, by the master maker who had, you know, thousands of years ago or whatever, had set this all up. 
apparently he didn't. He lied, and it's not really the stone. Quest has failed. They're all like, oh, I guess we're going to go back for good measure. Uh, you you get the idea that Logan and Farrell, their relationship is just kind of like stunted now because neither one of them can admit that they want to stay together. So they're like, oh, we're just going to go back our separate ways and start killing people again. And that's the end of that quest. You jump back over to the war in the north, and they get attacked by not only the Northmen army, but also by the Shank of the Flathead, these creatures that somehow are now aligned, even though they're not really human and are not shown to be highly intelligent by any means. Somehow now they're aligned with the Northmen. They have the, this witch involved as well, who you saw a little bit in the first book, and what's called the Feared, this giant that seems to be unkillable. There is a amazing fight scene there where the leader of our good i guess i guess good <laughs> none of them are great people either but I, i'll say our good group of north men go in and fight and savagely he ends up getting killed three trees and uh it's not a total loss it's you know not a massacre like the other two battles that we're privy to but they definitely don't win at all and the the union army definitely doesn't win either it's not great their leader dies and dogman who you see a lot kind of just always doubting not really sure what to do always thinking like well this is what logan would do and he's thinking uh what on earth are we gonna do we need a leader now and he's then elected the leader and he's kind of confused on how that's going to work. But I do think that's going to be interesting. I kind of figured that was who they were going to pick after uh, Three Trees, you know, partially just because he's the one we had the screen time for. But, you know, it could have been differently, but it was an interesting choice. So we end, though, the final chapter when he's told he's going to be the chief. Uh, it's a whole thing where they're talking about, you know, they're burying three trees, world leader, burying hopes of the past, hopes in the future. And it's just this bleak scene. And then you have uh, Glockta, who a little bit earlier in the series uh, is told to just, OK, the, the city you're in, it's going to fall. There's nothing you can do. We're surprised you held as long as you did. Come on home. And he does. And it's he's not really sure now what's happening. And then his plot line is the uh, only other prince gets murdered. And then he is told by the bank not to investigate it. So him, once again, his plot got done a little bit earlier and then really setting up something. But then we had two out of the three plots and his two, technically the city did fall. There was no heroic. We're going to keep it. It was no, it, it fell. And, and you're told that everybody union left there was killed basically. And, so a complete failure, a very dark ending, the, f the failure of the quest, and not a lot of authors, I feel like, would end a book that way. Uh, it's still just the prose. The writing is fantastic. And I, I really enjoyed the series so far. I did also, and I'm going to wrap it up as I'm getting even longer than the last one, we did not realize before that Joe Abercrombie actually his first published books or this series even more impressive that a, a brand new author, at least brand new published author, has this high quality of books. This one, once again, gets a lot darker. There's a ton more action, though. So I commented in the first one to be patient because it really felt like book two was going to amp it up. It does. Nonstop action. You get it's a very complete book. Plots are resolved. Uh, and it was really a great read, and I am excited to read Last Argument of Kings. I'm going to wrap it up, though, now at this point. I know it's getting long. Definitely recommend the book. Um, even if you weren't a huge fan of the first one, if you felt it was a little slow like I did, even though it was still very enjoyable and well-written, this definitely has a lot more action uh, with it as well. And so it is a, a great read if you if you read the first one and liked it at all. I think you'll like the second book even more. As always, uh, thank you for watching. If you have watched to this point, feel free to like and or subscribe. Uh, if you've got different thoughts, please feel free to leave those in the comments as well. This has been Audiobook Reviews.